In this video we're going to take a look at the idea of repeating frequencies in the discrete domain. Uh, in doing that I'm going to take a look at a sinusoid. Again, that's because all signals are made up of sinusoids. So if we can understand the case of repeating frequencies for a basic sinusoid, we can extend that out to more complex uh, examples. So I basically have a 10 Hz sinusoid here. I'm only showing two cycles of it. Um, and what I'm going to do is sample this sinusoid at uh, a rate of 75 Hz. And what I get then are these sample points here. Okay. And um, if, well, after capturing that sinusoid, all I will have are the sample points. So all I would have are these discrete points. So when we interpret this data, of course, what we tend to do is fit a curve through those points. So I'm going to fit a curve through those points and what I'll get is something that is my original sinusoid. Okay. There we go. Now, the thing is, there are lots of possible sinusoids that we could fit through the, those points. So I've, I've sampled uh, a sinusoid and that is when I, I can fit the original sinusoid through those points, but I could also fit a number of other sinusoids through those points. And I'll just show you that now. So there's one sinusoid that fits through all those points. There's another different frequency that fits through all those points. There's yet another one and another one. There's actually an infinite number of sinusoids that you could fit through those sample points. And you've got to remember that we don't, when we have our discrete signal, all we have are the sample points. We don't have any information really about the signal that was captured. So even though there was one frequency in the continuous domain that we sampled, this could be interpreted as being lots of different frequencies. Um, when we move into the discrete domain because lots of different sinusoids will, will fit through those points. Okay, and There are actually an infinite number of sinusoids that will fit through those points and there's a mathematical equation that, that determines those frequencies and I'll just write that mathematical equation up now. Um, so we do it in ink. So we can say F possible just uh, to indicate that there's a possible number of frequencies is equal to um, k times fs, where fs is the sampling rate, plus f, where f is the frequency of the sinusoid that has been um, of the continuous domain sinusoid, um, and also k by fs minus f, uh, where k is an integer. So k is equal to zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It goes on forever. So there are a, an infinite possible set of frequencies that will fit um, to the sinusoid that has actually been sampled. Um, I'm just going to try to sketch that out graphically as well. Just uh, I find it easier to remember when I when I visualize it graphically. So um, so we have a continuous Continuous sinusoid, and that's been passed through an analog to digital converter to give us a discrete possible. Let's see, um, uh, it gives us a set of possible discrete sinusoids. Let's put it that way. Okay, so we have a set of possible discrete sinusoids. Now, I'm just going to graph out the sinusoid in the frequency domain. Okay, so in the frequency domain we have amplitude versus frequency. Okay, um, and a sinusoid is shown as a, a spike um, in our simplified frequency domain view. 
Okay, so there's our spike to represent that sinusoid. Um, now, in the cont discrete domain, so this is continuous domain over here, and in the discrete domain, we can represent that in the frequency domain. I'm just going to show lots of frequencies over here. Um, we would have a, 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 an infinite number of possible frequencies. Now, the first possible frequencies are the lowest possible frequency, in this case, will be equal to f. And that's the one we generally accept as the frequency component that has been captured. But there are a range of other possible frequencies. Um, and the next one will be at fs plus f. So that'll be fs plus f. Looking at the scale here, so the distance from 0 to this point. So let's just write it in fs plus f. And there's another one at fs minus f there. Okay. And also up further along on our frequency axis at 2fs, there will be two more components uh, a distance of f hertz away from 2fs. Okay. And the same would apply up further at 3fs, and 4fs, and 5fs, and all the way up along the frequency spectrum. There are these possible repeating frequencies or, um, in the discrete domain. Okay. Um, so when I'm trying to remember this equation, generally I actually visualize this. Um, I find it easier anyway, but whatever way it works for you. But just be aware that when you move into, after sampling a sinusoid, um, when you move into the discrete domain, there are actually an infinite number of possible sinusoids that will fit the samples that you've obtained. And of course, you can extend that out to more complex signals because more complex signals will have just more frequency components. And maybe I'll just quickly do that here. So say I had uh, my continuous signal rather than a sinusoid, we say a continuous signal, had two frequency components. Just show this one in pink down here. So um, then in the discrete domain, what I'd have are um, the following possible frequency components. Okay, so these pink ones here are the repeating versions of this guy over here in the continuous domain. I'll just sketch in the rest. And the scale isn't great up there, but hopefully you get the idea. So for more co complex signals you get the same idea, but you'll have more sinusoids in the more complex signal. But each of those sinusoid components will be repeating. Okay, um, thanks for your attention.